Yeah. And that's another interesting thing that we showed. If you gave the patients this uh, IMM 101 or VACI first, and then you they relapsed and you had to give them one of the new approved immunotherapy agents, which had a 40% response rate, and we published this recently, my colleagues published it, we showed if they were primed with the innate immune boost, mm. and then they had the checkpoint inhibitor, Pembro, Keytruda, Nivo, uh, Optivo, the various, they're all roughly the same, the response rate was nearly double with mm. no added toxicity. Because you're upgrading the immune system ready. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that is a fantastic uh, uh, outcome. Again, we cannot get the, the, the big pharma to be interested in this, mm. even though they're aware of it. It's rather like they just don't want to know. Interesting, the possibilities of the IMM, the mycobacterium vaccine, combined with vitamin D and ivermectin. I wonder how many cancers that, that would treat. Well, it, it, it's, it's a study I would love to do. Um, it, they, we, you would call it a, a basket or an umbrella type of trial. It's yeah. just all comers. You just add mm -hmm. it in and then you would just monitor, are we getting better responses? Uh, that's, that's, that's what I would love to do. Because you have the, uh, the you you start from a position, unlike COVID vaccines, that you know they're safe. Yes. You know, years down the line, there are yes. no no SAEs above uh, two for any of the, of the uh, studies. And they're over. Uh, I calculated there's about four thousand patients have had vacai or imodulin because it started out in the big TB studies, mm. and so uh, there's no significant side effect. Just at the site where you give the intradermal injection, you might get a big reaction there. Although that's good, it means the immune response yeah. is working to it. Some people worried it gets infected, and we've uh, swabbed hundreds of them they're never infected what mm. appears to infection is a very strong macrophage uh, which has very strong anti-tumor activity response so we do, never do the, the inflammatory response just shows that it's working and it, we showed that it correlates with cytokine changes that you measure from blood in your arm which mm. are very expensive uh, to do but we showed they correlate beautiful with reaction on the arm so once the reaction on the arm is really settled down if they've got a cancer, you give them another one. Yeah, if and they they don't show, have the cancer, cytokines show you're getting a systemic yeah, benefit exactly. as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's incredibly practical yeah. and pragmatic. Mm. The other thing that a lot of people feel strongly about, and I, and I do, if people have got, say, stage four cancer, then then there is no reason not to try these things. So, so you know, anyone with stage four cancer, prostatic cancer, for example, we, we think mm. of the tragic news of Sir Chris Hoy over the mm. past few days. Uh, 48 with, with, with uh, bony metastases from stage 4 prostatic cancer. I mean, anyone in that situation who wants to try ivermectin and vitamin D and, and IMM should be allowed to. Yeah, I agree. I totally fact, agree. And then mm. these patients would opt into this and mm. then you would develop a cohort mm. in, in no time at all because patients would be opting in. Compare mm. those to the patients that didn't mm. opt in and mm. I strongly suspect you'd see a very strong profound difference in, in mortality within months. Mm. Well, I mean, I've, I've uh, got uh, prostate patients, not ivermectin, but uh, the, the IMM mm. uh, aspect who okay. uh, have been completely stable since starting on it. Yeah. I mean, just no progression, whereas before they were having progression. So mm. just that agent and vitamin D, of course. But, mm. uh, mm. And then the other, the other one I've been using, which is like the ivermectin because I can get it, is the low-dose naltrexone, which I mentioned before, because right. yeah. that damps down the chronic inflammation that is associated with cancer spreading. So I would I would actually include that as well, and uh, and then with what we've learned with the ivermectin, that none of them I don't think would interfere with each other. In, interesting to hear you say that that they wouldn't interfere with each other, and as as we find that these drugs are efficacious, potentially we could start titrating down the more conventional uh, chemotherapeutic agents, the more specific ones. We don't know that; that's pure speculation. But we, um, we don't know. But what I can tell you is that uh, in my career, I have I've lost count of the number of people who uh, say, I'm not going to have chemo because they knew people who had terrible horrible. responses yeah. with it. Yeah. Or I, I've persuaded a lot of people to have chemo on the grounds. The, one, the chemo I use, like for melanoma, it's not that toxic if you mm. play it right. And so, you know, you're thinking of people who've 
had really um, high dose aggressive treatment for breast or lung or something. It's not like that. But I've met so many people who just said, no way, I'm not having it, I'll try anything else. And more recently, you might remember uh, being brought to your attention, but Ellie McPherson was in the Daily Mail having uh, said that she'd got uh, breast cancer and she had looked and done a lot of research and wasn't going to have any chemotherapy herself. So even some high profile, very intelligent people are saying, mm. no, I'm not prepared to go down that route. Yeah, they're not, they'd rather die than suffer that amount of... Mm. Yeah, absolutely. But again, you know, I mean, to these people, ivermectin should be available over the counter as far as I can see. And they can, they're can they simply free to try it, collect the well, data, then would know. It's just... Yes, I, I, re, I remember my wife saying she could get it over the counter for scabies for mm. the children. And that's mysteriously disappeared. I mean, ivermectin does seem to be in really short supply, despite the fact that they can pr produce it by the tonne in drug factories it does seem to be getting very expensive and hard it, to it find it's ridiculously expensive and i think this is far pharmaceutical manipulation i mean i'm prepared to voice my speculation because there's no yeah. other logical reason for why something that could be produced in the tons sold for mm. pennies distributed to millions of people a day should suddenly become difficult and extremely expensive yeah. in the west yep yeah. My, my last uh, ones I imported were from over the counter from India, so it's still we know it's still available, still produced. So um, it just seems to have difficulty diffusing around the world these days. Mm. Do you want to mention this about the vitamin oh, D the actually, results? The, 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 I mentioned the about it boosting the um, yeah. the, the checkpoint inhibitors, and I, I put it the third line, which says IMM enhances. MDC, that means myeloid derived dendritic cells mm. and natural killer and gamma delta T cell. I was at a presentation. These are all immune cells. Immune cells. Protective immune cells. Where, where they, uh, different, different people have done this work and they presented when I was at uh, an immunotherapy conference just before the, the, the lockdown occurred in America. And I was staggered. They, people showed that if you didn't activate, have activated myeloid dendritic cells, the checkpoint inhibitors wouldn't work. And they said, this is what you've got to do to make them work. And they go to uh, another demonstration another day, and another group would say, here's the secret. If you don't activate natural killer cells, the checkpoint uh, inhibitors won't work. And they can only have, be activated with the vitamin D. Here we D have one agent it. that did both yeah. of this in-depth yeah. research. And we've shown in a small study that it doubles the response rate. So almost certainly through these, me these mechanisms that yeah. others have elucid elucidated so comprehensively. Yeah. So that there's, in, in your view, there's no oncological treatment that would be adversely affected by making a patient vitamin D replete prior to the commencement of treatment? No, none. It's, right. there's, no, there's no contraindication here. We should, all, all patients should be vitamin D replete, full stop. That's the yeah, end of it. Period, period. Yeah, yeah absolu absolutely. Yeah. Um, so this. I think we can jump up. Well, actually, it's, this is very interesting. No, go, go for it. Yeah. This, this was a paper published by, uh, in, in Nature Medicine by Chantels at and the group, which just pure looking through the literature, what cells control cancer? Now, the, the entire industry of immunotherapy thinks it's CD8 and CD4, but this showed yeah. quite categorically... The so C CD8 are the T helper cells yeah, and yeah. the, 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 the gamma delta the killer T cells. cells. At the top with the arrow there, mm. the gamma delta T cells. Now, my group has spent the last sort of, uh, over a decade ago, for a decade, showing that gamma delta T cells are the ones that you really want in cancer. And they've shown that beautifully, uh, Daniel Fowler and others in a series of papers. And here we have something that confirms it just from an observation status. They didn't go out to show that. They just said which ones are the most effective. Mm. And they found it was the gamma delta. And of course, the IMM boosts that gamma delta cell beautifully, right. where most other immunotherapies don't. So to put it simply, these gamma delta cells are a subset of T cells, but, yes. but their activity is boosted by giving a few dead bugs intradermally. Yes, the the gamma delta cells are basically a they are a cell midway between the very very uh, 
primitive T cell uh, that has no uh, recognition of anything right. particular. Yeah. And the adapted T cell, right. which when mature will right. see a specific antigen through right. its cytotoxic right. T cell right. lymphocytes will kill it. It's halfway through there. And it would appear that this is far more important than the highly evolved, sophisticated pathways which we've all been trying to manipulate. Yes. So once again, it's a simplicity which is so attractive and exciting mm. because it's very, it's very pragmatic, practical to yeah. do so. So we have we have these fa fairly crude cells. I, I I'd call them natural killer cells. Is that right? Yeah. Fairly, it's fairly just big lymphocytes. Just slightly more evolved than the natural yeah. killer cells. Yes. They can not, obviously we've got a spectrum of these in the body. Yeah. precisely for this reason exactly mm. it's amazing this spectrum of cells from from a rather crude thug that goes around beating up any cell it finds mm. <laughs> to, to one with a very precise uh, antigenic target and mm -hmm. we have a spectrum of these and because the the mycobacterium imm is polyclonal it's got the potential to stimulate many subgroups of cells Without a doubt, I mean, there's so there's so many different types of antigen mm. uh, in the mycobacterium. There, there's sort of lipids and ganglicides and all these various uh, different presentations, mm. and I think that's why it is so effective because. If you set out to make a product without using this as the stepping stone, you would never think to add all those things in together. You'd only ever do uh, one or two at a time. Mm. And that's the big mistake. Well, it's not the mistake. It's deliberate. The pharmaceutical industry is targeting, targeting one very precise thing mm. because that's patentable. Mm. Uh, whereas patenting a bacteria would probably be slightly more uh, tricky for them. Well, like the, the protections in the manufacturing process. It, right. Is, uh, right. That, that's really where all, all the uh, skill mm. set is. Yeah. Because it's very easy to produce a load and it's not effective. So yeah. that's, that's where the... Uh, the skill set is yeah. in preparing this but 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 you, you, your your mates could you, you, the skills ready to go well, if well, they press the button they, they could produce tons of this stuff the company may imagine them have got the patents to, to right. protect this uh, so imodulin could make enough to vaccinate the whole country within a few years if the government said go. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm. The, the beauty of this this is that you don't need to resort to gene therapy, as I no. call uh, messenger RNA. You don't need to resort to this to produce uh, millions of doses quickly. These things grow so fast that you yeah. can produce millions of doses quickly. You don't well, need just to. like making beer, isn't it? You just chuck a load exactly. in and culture them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that is the best. It's like yeast. Yeah. yeah. Just like yeast. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they'll presumably divide every 40 minutes or something, mm -hmm. you know, and get, get infinite amounts.